I got held hostage at a car dealership. It happened some years ago, uh, several years ago. I think this was before we were married. I know it was before we were married, but my future wife had talked to me about trying to help her on a car deal. And, you know, I'm not bad at it. I mean, I don't, I don't get beat up every time on a car deal. I mean, I feel like I don't. Um, you know, I'm no car savant or anything. But she had found a car she wanted at a lot. It was a Camry. It was brand new. It was like this cherry red color, like she likes on all of her vehicles. Like you might call it burgundy. I'm not 100 percent sure, but it was that color, and it w it had like a cream colored interior, which is what she wanted too. So it was like this perfect car. She really wanted this Camry. It was a decent price. I mean, you know, Toyotas at that time. I mean, this was like 2018, 2019, somewhere in there, and um, maybe 2018. But anyway, she, um, she, they pretty much got MSRP for Toyotas. And we, we went to the lot. She'd already been scoping this thing out. We had her other car. And I don't know why. I mean, we, we had kind of negotiated the price of the car and they didn't come off of it a whole lot. And then it was like, hey, do y'all have a trade? Well, yeah, we got, we got a trade. So can we look at it? Sure. So we hand them the keys. They pull it around back. And I mean, we've got to the point that we are, we are in the finance office, but they still haven't given us a, you know, a, a price that they're going to pay us on her car. Um, I like to separate them out. I really don't even like to talk about trades. I, I try to avoid that subject until we get the price hammered out on, on the car that we're buying. Um, and then, you know, that way we get the price nailed down on that car and then we can, then, then, then I can get a true idea of what they're, you know, trying to pay me for the trade and I can try to make sure that we get a fair price on that. So what it boils down to is we've already been there like two hours. You know, it's, I think, I think one tactic that car dealers use is to try to get you in there and kind of beat you down and, and, uh, <laughs> make you tired and like you're just sick of dealing with them. So you're like, wow, well, let's sign this and get out of here. You know, even though this is $50 a month higher than the payment I wanted, but now you've went ahead and paid them $50 a month for 72 months, which is a pretty good lick. You know, if you're, if you're just hanging with somebody for another hour. So we've been waiting a long time. Finally, they come to us and give us price on the car. And it's like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars off of what we, what I thought the car was worth, which was what they were offering was actually way lower than Kelly Blue Book uh, trade-in value. Now, I understand Kelly Blue Book had never sold a car. I know they priced a whole bunch of them, and and they've got the data on a whole bunch of them. So you know if if you're a if you're a a car seller and you're gonna get on my case about Kelly Blue Book. Look, I don't, I don't have access to the Black Book. I know that's what they go by. Um, so I don't have access to that. So I have to go with what I got. And I know that that's gonna be pretty close. I mean, it may not be dead on to what the car book value is. And you know, that's just where I'm at. So they were twelve, thirteen hundred dollars off, something like that. After him hauling around there. And they've decided that they're not going to meet us in the middle on that or anything. Like, it's, this is the price and this is what we're offering you. I was like, all right, well, let's just go because some other Toyota dealership down the road will probably take our deal. And, and they'll find the car that you want, so don't don't worry about that. And, you know, I could tell that Lachey was probably a little heartbroken that we weren't going to buy the car, but I think she understood. So, we... Um, we told them we wanted our keys. We're going. We're going to leave. We're going to jet. You know, that's, appreciate y'all's time, but this deal is just not working for us. It seems like it's only working for y'all, and uh, you know we got we got to make it work for us too. So they kind of keep trying to talk us out of it. I said, no, no, we just we just want to leave. Bring our car back around so we can get it in and go. 
a more like they're out on a test drive in it i said like with a customer no like one of our mechanics is driving it just to kind of you know fill it out and i said we'll call them and tell them to come back we need to leave we don't want to be here anymore like at this point i feel like y'all are starting to hold us hostage we don't want to be here we want to leave we're free people so uh, by this time i'm getting a little loud i'm getting frustrated very frustrated and I mean, of course i mean i'm not gonna get violent dude i mean you know you're really gonna have to force me uh to get to get mean enough to hit somebody but some of these guys started trickling into that office with us and the finance lady and there ends up being like four other people besides me and my wife in there and it's like are they really thinking i'm fixing to haul off and hit somebody or something i'm not so <clears throat> after i have asked several more times and they've asked, said give us a couple more minutes give well i'm watching my watch and when a couple more minutes goes by i'm like hey get us our car we want to leave well finally i tell them i'm about to call the sheriff's office and i'm gonna get a deputy down here and we're gonna get my keys back because right now y'all are holding us here against our will we don't want to be here and y'all are holding our car i mean y'all got to bear in mind it was over it was probably 30 to 45 minutes that i've been trying to get our car back and they're telling me they've lost the keys i, I once I mean, I know I ain't got to that part yet, but when I got, when I got past the part where, okay, the mechanic should be back right now, sir, we ain't gonna lie to you, we've misplaced those keys. And I, look, I've had people confirm that that same dealership did them that way too. So it wasn't just me. This wasn't just a one-time deal. So I don't kind of, I really don't mind getting on here and saying this. I don't think it was a mistake, and I don't think they had misplaced our keys. So anyway, I do it. I, I call the sheriff's office. I get on the phone. I'm on the phone with them. And they say, hey, oh, whoa, 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 we got your keys. We got your keys. You can go. So I got off the phone with the, with the, de the dispatcher or whoever the person answering the phone was. I hung up. They got our keys, and we got in the car and left. And we never did even offer to do business with that dealership again. And, uh, and I probably didn't tell that story enough. Uh, but as time went on, I told friends and, and somebody would say, yeah, yeah, so-and-so told me that they did that to them out there. I was like, no, yes, they did. So anyway, I don't know if that's like a tactic that some dealerships use, but this one did. For whatever reason, they're not in business anymore. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, hey, uh, appreciate y'all hanging out with the story. Um, still, if you'd like for me to wear your hat or T-shirt, send me a message uh and, and i'll get you my address and you can send it to me and i'll wear it you know within reason i can't be i can't be promoting uh some things because i i am a school teacher um and i would i would love to put your logo on this video uh that that would require a little bit of a sponsorship though but it's gonna be so cheap you'll be like man i can't believe i'm getting all this exposure for this little bitty amount of money basically just paying for my meal all right, y'all have a great night, great afternoon, whatever time it is you're watching this. Appreciate y'all hanging with me. See ya.